The long history of segregation analysis in the United States tends to think of cities as either segregated or diverse. How segregated are blacks from whites? And this is a, an important question, no doubt. But we're dealing with couples that might be black Asian or um, Native American white. So how do we come to characterize neighborhoods and cities? We need a typology of neighborhoods. So if a, an Asian white couple were to survey the landscape in Omaha or New York City, how do we think they saw the city? How did they view the city? So we wanted ways of thinking about the city that we think characterize the different neighborhoods. You can actually have segregation and diversity next to one another. So we came up with our own schema. We would classify neighborhoods by how diverse they were, but also recognize which group was dominant within that. You could have a highly diverse neighborhood where no group is dominant, and we call those tracks, those neighborhoods, highly diverse. And then we have tracks that might be moderately diverse, but with one group that's dominant. And then we have tracks in our schema that are not diverse. And again, we identify the group that's dominant, white dominant, black dominant, Asian dominant. So students of urban sociology, urban economics, urban geography can go to these websites for each city in the United States and see how they look through the lens that we've created. They can see also how the cities are changing between 1990, 2000 and 2010. The other thing we've done, we've gone beyond the metropolitan areas that were the points of our initial interest and we have characterized every census tract in every state this way. So we have a component of the website now where you can go and look at North Dakota or you can go look at Alabama by uh, census tract for 1990, 2000 and 2010 and witness the changes or in some places the lack of change that has occurred in those states. We're going to move off to thinking about how neighborhoods change and one of the issues about neighborhood change surely involves our neighborhoods gentrifying. We have information about if a neighborhood has become white dominant and was black dominant, is that gentrification? So we can attach that information on racial transition to other information perhaps on housing price transition or income transition in those neighborhoods and then begin to identify, are they gentrifying? So you can use our schema in various ways. You can apply it to the country as a whole, to states, to cities, and the way we do it on the website is to apply to neighborhoods.